Hello and welcome to my channel. I hope to find you all well. Today on the Digital Black Magic channel I will show you how to swap a failed hard drive in a RAID system. In my case it's a RAID 1 which is a mirror. That means that the data is written to the first drive and the second drive in the same manner. So both drives hold the same data. One of these drives failed miserably and the other is not in the best health condition. So I need to change both and I will show you how to change the first one and rebuild the RAID system afterwards. Have fun with the video. Using the program Crystal Disk Info, which I linked in the video description, you are able to read the hard disk's parameters. Hard disks use sectors to store data. Crystal Disk Info shows that both 3 terabyte Seagate drives have a caution. It is regarding failed sectors. I'm going to swap both drives because of the failed sectors. The first drive I'm going to change has over 40,000 failed sectors. On the other hand, the second drive has just 600. This is part one of the diagnostics of a failed hard drive. You need to know which hard drive failed. Next up is to check the consistency of the data. Using Check Disk, a program provided by Microsoft, you are able to check the integrity of the data. It is also possible to check for drive errors. In this particular case, I don't think this is going to result in any failed sectors because the drive itself is a RAID system and not a single drive. If you have a single drive, you would be able to find bad sectors, but the integrity of the data can be checked. This diagnostics process takes hours, that is why it ran throughout the night. You can restart the computer once this process is done. The hard drives are managed in a special part of the BIOS, the RAID BIOS. This part of the BIOS is shown on the screen here. The last but one drive has failed. It says error occurred. In the RAID volumes section, you will find volume 1 with ID 0. Status is degraded. This essentially means that the mirror has failed and there is only one drive left. So this means I have to change the hard drive with the serial number LHWW in it. I have a spare disk which I got out of my NAS system recently. I will use that to replace it. A video on RAID systems will follow shortly. As stated before, a mirror means that both drives contain the same data, so one can fail. As shown in the Crystal Disk Info earlier, unfortunately the second drive is failing too, so I need to swap this as well at a later date. I have my backup ready in case the data is corrupted. Be advised that RAID is not a backup. If any example would have been needed, here you have it. RAID keeps data available, but not safe. What's left to do is to turn off the computer and swap the hard drive. Come along for the ride. I have placed the computer on the table now in order to swap the drive. I will look for the hard drive because obviously I don't know which serial number it has. Two hard drives are sitting at the bottom of the case and one is sitting just underneath the card reader. In order to swap the drives, I will open the lid of the case. It is easier to access the drives at the bottom than it is to unscrew the top drive. I will need to unscrew that using a screwdriver. That is why I'm going to start investigating the bottom drives first. The drive on the right hand side has a new label. Seagate has changed the style of the hard disk's label, so I can rule that one out and it's down to the one just left of it or the top one. Since the bottom drive is easy to access, I will investigate this first. The data connection has to go first 
and then the power cord needs to go. Once this is done, the hard drive can be pulled out in its caddy just for me to check the serial number. Unfortunately, this is not the drive we are looking for. Both drives are alike, so it's impossible to distinguish them apart from the serial number. It has the wrong serial number, so the failed hard drive must be the top one, which I will unscrew now. The hard drive, which requires my attention now, is sitting in a slot which is made for disk drives or, let's say, other peripherals like card readers. It can sit there, but it is not supposed to be there. It is easier to place a hard drive in a big slot than to cramp it in this one. Unfortunately, the case has no option to open the other lid, so the only thing that keeps this drive in place is the single screw, which is far from ideal. As you can see here, the serial number is LHWW. In order to be clear on that, I will mark this failed drive with a big X just to avoid any mix-up with other drives which may be laying around here somewhere. I will swap the drive with this one by Western Digital. It is a 3 terabyte drive. I took this drive out of my NAS system recently. It works perfectly, but it's not brand new. So everything is done and I can reassemble the computer. Let's go into the BIOS and see what happened. The situation in the BIOS shown on the screen is similar to the situation we had with the failed drive, but now we have the Western Digital drive instead of the Seagate drive. This is perfect because this is a drive I just added to the system. The drive shows as no RAID disk. That means it is not configured in any kind of RAID, just like the Samsung SSD in the top or the Seagate 2TB on position 5. The status of our RAID is still degraded. This just means we need to fix the RAID mirror, which I will do now in the BIOS itself. Entering the BIOS, we are presented with a warning. It says degraded volume and it offers a solution. It says, well, you have a degraded volume, which we obviously knew before. And it says there is one drive in your system. By coincidence, the new one I just added that can resolve this problem. I could just press escape or I could be Captain Obvious and just press enter to accept this recommendation, which I obviously do because I want the 3 terabyte Vesta Digital Drive to be part of the RAID 1 mirror which just broke. Accepting the recommendation changes the status from degraded to rebuilt and the Vesta Digital Drive is now part of RAID Volume 0, shown as a member disk. So the system will copy all the data from the Seagate drive with the destination Western Digital Drive. 
but of course it will stay on the Seagate drive as well, otherwise we would have a broken mirror again. This will take hours and it will be happening within the OS. It says in the bottom of the screen the rebuild process will be done in the OS. The driver of this RAID controller will do that. The big RAID controllers used in servers can do that by themselves so they don't need any OS to rebuild the status of a RAID system. Now we can leave this menu using the exit function and start into Windows. Back in Windows, using Crystal Disk Info, we see that the remaining Seagate drive still has errors and needs changing. You can also see that the drive has an uptime of 14,000 hours, which is round about 600 days, and an RPM of 7,200, which is quite high. The Western Digital Drive has only 5,400 RPMs, and this leads to a significant change in transfer speeds. With both the Seagate drives, I had a transfer speed of around about 200 megabytes a second. With the Western Digital Drive in the RAID, it reduced to 120 and may drop to just 60. This is not a judgment of the drive, because I know that this drive is very slow compared to the others. It just points out that the RPM and the other ca characteristics of the drive may have an influence in its performance. A slow drive in healthy condition is great compared to a faster one which just broke. The origin of the Western Digital Drive is my NAS. And you can see that because it has around about 300 days on uptime. I've resolved my problem and shown you how to do it. Thanks for your attention and thanks for watching my video. If you like the video, you may leave a thumbs up or consider subscribing to my channel. I'm looking forward to a new video soon and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.